Hello everyone, today I am going to discuss about some of the few questions that have come multiple times in NT and Ed Home Science paper. So let's get started. The first question is choose the incorrect statement about BMR. BMR or basal metabolic rate can be defined as a process in which the energy of a person gets metabolized when the person is in complete physical and mental rest having a normal body temperature after the consumption of a meal. So BMR is directly related to the surface area of a body. BMR is proportion, inversely proportional to the age of a person. That is, BMR is tend to be higher in infancy and young children as compared to adults. BMR is tend to be higher in males as compared to females. And BMR is tend to be higher in the people living in tropical climates as compared to the people living in temperate zones. So the correct answer is C and the BMR is not increased in warm climate. The next question is Bloom's taxonomy of the learning objectives involve the following concepts. Well Bloom is taxonomy is used to define the complexity as well as the specificity of the learning object. According to him, the learning objectives have three domains that is cognitive domain, affective domain and the psychomotor domain. So the steps of the cognitive domain include first knowledge which can be a knowledge of facts or knowledge of any kinds of theories and the principles. And after having knowledge one must uh, comprehend or understand that fact or knowledge and after the comprehension process there is the application of that knowledge in real life and after application there will be analysis, synthesis or the generation of new theories or the new facts and then there is the evaluation process. So the correct answer is A. The next question is the theory that emphasizes the imitation or observation learning is called social learning theory. So social learning theory was defined by or proposed by Albert Bandura and according to him social learning theory has four stages. First stage is attention that before learning the learner must be attentive and there should not be any distractions while learning. Next stage is retention. After giving attention, one can remember or one should remember or retain all the things that have learned. And after the process of retention, there will be the reproduction of learned things and then motivation. So proper motivation must be there for the imitation or the observation for observational learning. The next question is a diet high in saturated fats can be linked to which of the following disorders and the correct answer is cardiovascular disease. High consumption of the saturated fats tend to increase the plasma cholesterol and the plasma triglyceride levels of the blood. Saturated fats also have a tendency to reduce the number of LDL receptors which help in the further transportation and the metabolism of LDL or low density lipoproteins or the bad cholesterol. So as a result LDL or bad cholesterol tends to get deposited in the blood and can lead to a number of degenerative heart diseases and cardiovascular disease is one of them. The next question is as per ICMR the recommended dietary allowances for the energy for 10 to 12 year old girl is 2010 kilocalorie per day. So RDA or recommended dietary allowances can be defined as the average daily intake of nutrient that is required to meet the daily requirement of a healthy individual and is also required to lead a healthy life and this is a very direct question and for answering this question 
a good knowledge of RDA is very important. The next question is, following are the physical properties of silk. So, silk is a protein fiber and it's considered as queen of all the fibers. The physical properties of silk include, it's basically smooth and strong in nature. It has high resiliency and moderate elongation. It can get damaged by the sunlight even if exposed much to the sunlight and treatment with chlorine bleaches, bleaches can cause yellow discoloration. Along with that, it dries very quickly and it's luscious as well. So the correct answer is smooth in nature and moderate elongation. The next question is related to the enzymatic browning. So enzymatic browning basically results from the formation of brown colored pigments and the pigments are formed by the oxidation of the polyphenol compounds by an enzyme called phenol oxidase and this enzyme is found to be present on the surface of cut fruits and vegetables. So enzymatic browning in cut fruits and vegetables can be prevented by using natural antioxidants like vitamin C or ascorbic acid by dipping the fruits or vegetables in water in milk and also by balancing the pH of the fruits. So the correct answer is C. The next question is arrange the steps involved in the preparation of time plan in the correct sequence. So basically time is considered as one of the most valuable and intangible tools. So the management of time nowadays is very important. So for management of the time at first a list should be made that will include all the flexible and inflexible activities. After that, a time requirement required for each and every activity needs to be estimated. After that, a balance should be made between the total estimated time with the time actually available. And then the time sequence needs to be determined and the time schedule needs to be finalized so the correct answer is b so the next question is related to bars or behaviorally anchored rating scale so it's basically a graphical uh, rating scale which has a vertical scale which contain number from 5 to 9 and here the performance of an employee is evaluated on the basis of good moderate and poor so the correct answer is bars is a tool used for performance appraisal. The next question is following are the functions of protein in the human body. So basically the main function of protein is to help in the growth and the maintenance of the tissues and also helps in building muscles. Next. It helps in the maintenance of the appropriate pH by acting as a buffer. So the human body continuously produces acids and alkalis and the protein basically acts as a buffer in order to neutralize all the excess acids or alkalis in order to prevent acidosis and alkalosis. And the last one, it also helps in the transportation of nutrients. So there are several carrier proteins present in our body which helps in the transportation of the nutrients from the intestinal cell wall to the blood and from the blood to the tissues of the body so that those nutrients can get utilized well and therefore help in the building of new tissues and uh, helps in the development as well. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for more updates. Thank you.